everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Monday, April 19th, 2021 RTD Accountability Governance Subcommittee meeting. I am Jackie Malay, acting as chair for today because our uh, committee chair, Julie Mullica, is unable to attend. Um, I will call our meeting to order and I will refer everyone to uh, item number two, our April 5th, 2021 meeting summary and attachment A. Are there any comments on, or changes requested for that meeting summary? I am not seeing any, so we will move forward with that uh, to our next agenda item number three. It's a discussion of the revised draft partnership recommendations. I'll refer you to attachment B in your packet and I will turn it over to our esteemed colleagues at Dr. Cog, Mr. Doug Rex to lead this conversation. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you for your willingness to step in at the last second here and, and, and chair this meeting. I know just FYI, Elise Jones will be joining us here shortly. She's caught up in another meeting, just wanted to share. Um, let me see here. Let me, uh, let me share my screen here real quick. Okay, you guys see my screen? Red line? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. All right, so, so at the last meeting, um, we presented, you know, kind of a, a draft partnership recommendation um, for, for you guys to consider and discuss. And uh, I went back after, um, after receiving your comments from the last meeting and revised that recommendation. And I hope I did a half decent job of getting all your comments in there. I think I did, uh, but I'd be happy to take back anything else, but I would like to finalize this sooner rather than later. Just so everybody knows, because I didn't have a chance to do this at the end of last meeting, we really, because of our schedule, the overall schedule, we really only have a couple um, sub scheduled subcommittee meetings left. So, um, so it's pretty important, of course, that we, you know, we have one one outstanding uh, item that we haven't talked about yet at all that we'll be talking about over the next two meetings. But anyway, I just want to say that just in case I didn't get a chance at the end. But this, on this item, on the partnership recommendations, I'd um, I entertain. Um, any conversations you want to have about any any revisions, and I'm willing. To, I'm welcome to go through them one by one if you want me to, Mayor. So I read them. I do have a comment, but I want to uh, see what the pleasure of the body is. Are uh, hopefully folks did have an opportunity to review them, and are there any uh, thoughts, comments? Yes. So uh, hey, Jackie. Stay hey, Dea. Hi, um, Doug, I, I have more of a clarifying question on the, I think second to last bullet point, or second to the bottom, yeah, uh, the partnership dashboard. Is this a separate dashboard than what's been in discussion by the Finance and Operations Committee, or is this um, the same dashboard, but just reflecting the partnership components? At, at least in my mind, Daya, that it would be, it would be part of that dashboard. Yeah, if that makes sense. Got it. Okay. I, I wasn't super clear. It, it kind of read like it may have been a separate document, but that could that could just be me. Okay, no, cool. Yeah, I just thought, you know, because quite frankly, I when I was doing a little bit of research and some of the information that RTD shared with us on their partnerships, I was I was actually very surprised by the number of partnerships that they have in place. And I for whatever reason, it was just ones that I never really knew they had. And I think they they should, um, you know, I think it'd be a good idea to share those with the public and, and uh, make sure they understand, you know, that there's a lot of work going on out there. I can't raise my hand. Yeah, right, please. The, the one thing that I would uh, say about that one in support of what Dea is saying is it's a little confusing as to this is a separate dashboard or this is a, a part of the uh, dashboard that's going to be recommended. Yeah, I, I, think I can clarify that, Rod. I, I can I can put a couple words in there that they'll refer to, you know, maybe the dashboard versus you know a separate one. Yeah, yeah we wouldn't maybe, want them have to have to build a separate one just for that. Right. Yeah, just say include, maybe just include. Yeah. Well, it refers to a partnership dashboard pretty specifically. That the yeah. public facing dashboard include. And right. it's, it's, it's not a part. part. You say partnership dashboard, then you're implying there's another dashboard. Right. Maybe it's a partnership component of a recommended dashboard, blah, blah, blah. 
Yeah. Well, or yeah, encourage RTD's public facing dashboard do include a partnership, la la la. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And it's recorded, Doug. So look, you have it there for posterity. So I don't even have to write it down. Don't even bother writing it. Um, <laughs> any any other comments before? And Can after I, does our, that, does that ahead, get it from your perspective? Sorry. Again, yeah. no. What? Dana, that gets it from your perspective, doesn't it? Are you muted? Yeah, she's not. I'm nodding. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> So the only um, thing that I thought of as I read through this was regularly evaluate that last bullet, existing partnerships to determine their effectiveness and opportunities to rescope relationships to ensure maximum benefit. It made me think about success metrics for these partnerships, and they may be different depending on the partnership, but this idea of having a metric for success with partnerships, I think is important. Um, so my, and I apologize that I don't have a specific language to give you, Doug, but wondering yeah. if the board has any other members would like to comment on that thought. Right. I, I agree, you know, that the partnerships, if there isn't a measurable in there as to what they're supposed to achieve, then a, you can build a partnership and it just sits there and nothing happens and there's no point in having it continue. But if you have a clear vision of what they're supposed to accomplish, then you can say and report on where you are relative to that or in some way incorporate that in the dashboard. I think there ought to be an accountability. Right. Yep. And so I'm str I struggled, Doug, to identify where it best sits. Um, I think it's a separate, it, you could either put it as part of this, that they should highlight the partnerships or you could put it in separately, but it, it's important enough that it might be a separate uh, recommendation. What if you were to include it in, the, in that partnership dashboard one? Because I know in the operations now, you guys are talking about various metrics, right? For the dashboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. maybe, Maybe it is there and, and at the end of it say to highlight existing private and public partnerships and and um, success metrics or something there. And then when we evaluate and then under the evaluation, you acknowledge it there as well, Doug, what, uh, to determine your effectiveness. Metrics. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you said including success metrics on the end of the one that's there after Doug rewords it a little. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds good to me. Okay, so that's the only th other thing I had. I don't, I, before, I don't want, I, I, before we move on, I don't want to close this out before I, everyone's had an opportunities or any, any other comments. And obviously uh, Elise can sh share comments directly with Doug when she, um, yeah. if, if she has anything additionally. That'd be great. Hey, we... Jackie did, oh, Go I'm, ahead, I'm sorry, Dave, I was just going to ask, okay. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, the only other just reflection that I have is around bullet number three around exploring opportunities for cost effective local transportation. Um, it, this is more of a just comment. We don't need to discuss it too much in detail, but I do kind of wonder if, as RTD is exploring this um, recommendation, if that might open up more of a dialogue with the, with union representatives that might feel as though we're transitioning RT towards more contract services. So I just want to lift that up as a, just a point um, yeah. of consideration. Indeed. Yeah, that it, it that, and I think a lot, I think that comment may uh, be an overarching comment for work that we're doing on all of these and Dea, if I might suggest that we have that a conversation with the full uh, uh, board at our, our next meeting or the full body, the full committee meeting to talk about that. Um, my initial gut reaction is that I, I think it's, I think it's okay to have a mix of both, you know, contracting and non, because unfortunately been the we had a very serious issue with, with in our community because the fact that we didn't have they didn't have enough union um uh employees and 
and they weren't allowed to contract. And so it created a bit of a mini crisis. So I'm very, uh, I don't, I, I respect a union and I'm not trying to, to get move away from it, but having that flexibility to allow them to bring them in for pilots or for emergency situations. I think there are some overarching comments that we may want to make on that topic. Does that seem reasonable to, to ask that? Be I think so. Yeah, I think this should be discussed by the broader committee, not in this smaller session. Yeah. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thanks, Doug. And also, um, Mayor, to Dana's point, maybe even in the final report, we can put you know some a, a clause, a language sentence in there that actually acknowledges um, you know that some of these some of these recommendations have the possibility of um, uh, of what some some impacting and yeah, that, that, was, that impact. should be explored. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, Something and, like that. To that point, I think we've also we need to be sensitive to the potential impacts from all of these recommendations and that this is a one year abbreviated process and some of the equity issues probably are going to need some additional attention above and beyond what we can do here. So yeah. maybe keep, keep that there. Does that does that work for folks? My only question is, if it's a partnership with Uber, who's a non union shop, does that mean that they can't have a partnership with Uber? No, I think we just need to, I think the point is we have to acknowledge that it may impact it and not be tone deaf to it. And that, that, uh, that uh, to me, I think we should still obviously be able to explore it. We'll probably have a broader conversation about that with the full group though. Because I, I want to leave that I open. Can, can you think of wording that you could bring to the full group though in that? We just walk in and toss it out. I don't know that we're going to be right. able to come to consensus or we may wind up taking a too long of a time. So maybe you could have a look and say, this might work or. Yeah, it's, it was my understanding that, are they in negotiations right now with that contract? I think it they expired, are. Think or it was so. expiring in this spring or February, March timeframe. Has a new contract, do they know, do they have a sense of when that, I, I don't wanna, I don't want to add fuel to fight the fire of any negotiations that are happening. And maybe we can just borrow language that exists there to uh, yeah. The other suggestion, um, Jackie, is that we can certainly pull from the converse, the legislative session, because I know there was some negotiation as well, even around some of the language right. of the legislation. So as a nod that, again, we are acknowledging that we have boundaries that we're working within. We're trying to be as flexible to make RTD the, the provide, to give RTD the, the flexibility to provide the level of services that it needs to provide, whatever that looks like. That, that's a great suggestion, Daya. So, so if if, uh, if staff could find that language and bring it to the body, and let's to catch to catch up our our esteemed chair Elise. So we're we are on item number three, and we were just reviewing these to add some addition to make sure we were all comfortable with it. There was um, there were there have been some additions that we we uh, raised up. And Doug, do you want to just quickly review those for Elise's benefit, and then? Um, mm -hmm. We'll make I sure can circle listen. back. I don't want to slow down everybody. Okay. I'm sorry I had a, a competing call, but yep. just keep going forward. I'll catch up. Okay. Oh, Jackie, so, I didn't write them down because you said we had a recording. All right. Well, then even better. Well, I, I, I think we were talking watch. about, well, all right, I'll, I can quickly say that we want to ensure that any reference to a dashboard here is to one dashboard. A specific dashboard is not being created for these partnerships. And the other thing that was discussed was the idea of creating some metrics or an accountability back to that the dashboard should reflect success metrics and they should be evaluated annually along with a, the regular evaluation of the partnerships, identifying what the success metrics are. So the, the, did I forget anything, Dea or Rut? Nope. Or anyone else who- Nailed it. No. Okay. All right, those were, the, those were the additional comments. If you have anything else, Elise, please share it now or send it on to to Doug, um, if I'm good, thank you. Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on then to item number four, and it's a continued discussion of RTD boundary focus area. And again, that um, is attachment C of your packet, and um, just uh, Doug, did you did you yeah. uh, have any? Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me start on this. Um, so just real quick. So, um, so at the last meeting, um, we had a, we had a good conversation about this, and um, 
just so you know, I know there was a question that was asked about if um, RTDs ever done an exercise or analysis to kind of right size themselves. And I had a conversation with Bill Van Meter last week and, um, and, and they had not. Now he did say, and I think this was also brought up last meeting that, that um, part of the scope for, for our, our reimagine RTD will include a, a, a discussion about the boundary, uh, the service area. Um, and I don't know when that's scheduled to go forth, but, um, but it is part of the scope. Um, so, uh, so just more FYI on that. Um, we, there was also a request for some, some uh, information on future growth within, within the district. And Annie Rice, who's with us here today. Hi, Annie. She's provided um, a few slides in the packet to, to show you some of the growth comparisons between 2020 and 2050. As you will see, um, there's, you know, in, in broad, broad perspective, there's not a tremendous amount of growth on the perimeter. Um, the vast majority of our growth in, in, in density is, is, is all is infill. Annie, I don't know if you know the percent of that or if Brad or somebody's on the line, but I, I think I remember Brad saying it was to the tune of pretty close to like 75, 80% of our of growth um, is, is infill growth over the next, over the next 20, 30 years, um, which is you know, significant. And it's definitely a change from, from past. Um, what else, Annie? Oh, I, Annie also provided a one, one pager on uh, microtransit and uh, kind of the pros and cons of it. I think uh, just to summarize, Annie, and jump in anytime, Annie, that, um, that basically that microtransit has its place, right? Um, I think most notably, it seems to work better in areas maybe on the outskirts where there's not a lot of fixed service, fixed route service. Um, it does not work as well um, where service is available. Correct, Annie? Correct. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. I'm not <laughs> sure if you actually want me to present the slides, um, but I'm happy to do that if that would be helpful. I would say quickly run through them. That would probably provoke some thought. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, it'll be really quick. Uh, so this is just basically a quick addendum based on some questions that you all had had at the previous meeting. Um, so this is, is my, is anything being blocked? I just want to make sure you can see everything. I can see it clearly. Okay. Um, so this is the extent of 2020 population and employment density based on Dr. Cog's household and employment forecasts. Um, and this is the extent in 2050. So I can go back and forth, but not much changes like Doug mentioned in terms of the extent of, so, so the light purple is pretty transit supportive density for fixed route transit. The dark purple is definitely transit supportive density. Um, the areas that aren't filled in are kind of questionable um, so I've noted a, a few places where the extent actually does grow, and I'll go back and forth as I'm saying this, um, around Henderson and Brighton by Bar Lake State Park. So up around here, you can see it, oops, you can see it fill in a bit. Um, also in Longmont, Castle Rock, Parker, Littleton, Broomfield, Wheat Ridge, and Lakewood. Um, so you can see some change down here um, and heading out to Golden, uh, it fills in a, a little bit. Um, and so this is that same map, but with the RTD uh, lines filled in. And then I can leave this up. This is just the same maps I've been showing side by side for you to compare if that's easier. Okay, I any a question? During, yeah, right. Ready for that? The, the one thing that really strikes me is that there's a whole lot of white space in this. And that almost all the, the population density and, the, and to a large degree, the communities we're serving are in that central area. When we talk about right-sizing RTD, 
there's, there's a lot of areas that RTD doesn't really serve, but they may be within the district. And I'm curious if that's going to be the, what the criteria is going to be if you look at the question of right sizing RTD. It would cost a fortune to try to get buses and everything out into all that white space. And I know that from a business perspective, that's not the solution. And so what's an acceptable solution going to be? Are those people going to say, uh, you can't get our sales tax revenue uh, because you're not providing services? So it's not a, an unreasonable ask, but it's certainly not. Because there's so few people out there, then it won't, wouldn't have that effect. But you can't, it's hard with sales taxes to draw a border around this and say all the people who sell anything, all the grocery stores and everything else have to have a different sales tax rate within that part. Did that make any sense to anybody? Yeah, I would be interested to see where if you put open space or you know state or federal lands and you shaded that all out, what it would look like, right? So is yeah. there really a realistic expectation that in some of these areas, particularly on the Western side that we'd ever be providing service? You know what I'm saying? Like service wouldn't yeah. even be required. I guess would be my point. And I don't know if that would influence anything or not. I'm not as familiar with that. You know, the geography of some of those areas is not conducive to really big build out in some cases. Right, right. And density begets density to a certain degree. You know, if, if, you, if you have no stores around there, you're probably not going to suddenly have a bunch of houses popping up. Right. Except for certain types of people. Yeah, so there wouldn't even be a need. I guess my point is the need, for, not even the need for service. I'm more interested in those areas that um, aren't being served or may believe they're not being adequately served that are those uh, that have a higher population and employment density. And I see Ron's got his hand raised. So Ron, Ron, I'm gonna make you turn your camera on. That's, that's the kind of chair I am. <laughs> I will. Get I, I, I certainly didn't mean to interrupt the conversation, the flow of the conversation, just when there was a chance. But I did, because I, I think this is a really important conversation, and this inf this data is really is really important. But I want to point out that um, let's see, Annie, this is based on census tract geography, and just by way of reminder to the group, census tracts out on the periphery are large, really big. And so this geography can hide pockets of density. And I, I think, you know, we need to be a little bit careful about that and cognizant of that. And Annie, I don't know if you have thoughts on sort of how to, how we might deal with that to ferret out, you know, are there places sort of within this big analysis that, you know, are there ways to kind of help us identify those things? Yeah, I mean, I guess I could drill down to a smaller, level. The other thing I was going to add, and I don't know if this is kosher, but I did add a slide um, that was not in the agenda packet based on some research um, that RPD did. So we, we looked at some of the data from the National Transit Database. Um, because of the conversation in the previous meeting, um, there were some questions about whether RTD is like out of the ordinary in terms of its service area or density. And we do have some comparable peers. I've just selected some, some peers in terms of service area size and service area density. And PennDOT and King County Metro show up in both of these columns. Um, but I just wanted to point out that I didn't want it there to be like a misunderstanding that RTD is this outlier because we're not. Good. We're not an outlier in terms of, I guess, can you clarify that, Annie, in the, the physical size of the, of both the, the uh, district? Size, both Pardon? the physical size and um, our density of people per square mile in the RTD district. There's some larger and some smaller numbers. <laughs> Right, but is it, again, it's so hard to compare, you know, we've heard for such a long time, RTD is very unique in the size of service area and then the geography of service area. 
So are these pockets in these other community, peer communities, are they kind of, are they the fringes? Are they around the edges or are they in the center? And, or are they dispersed evenly throughout those districts? I mean, or a combo, do you, do, do you have a um, sense? I don't know if I can speak to that at, at this level of analysis. Yeah. I just kind of pulled. Okay, thanks. The teams and stats. I can address yeah, Lynn. Um, I think that that uh, uh, this uh, RTD has a very large service area. There may be some. I'm not sure, uh, you know, how uh, King County Metro uh, compares, except that there are, you know, Sound Transit and other uh, providers in that area. Um, but it is, uh, it, it, you know, I'm sure there are others that are similar. I, I also, I don't know. I know that Bill Van Meter and Bill Seroy and Brian Welter are are on the call. I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but they might be able to um, address some of this as well. Um, Lynn or, or, or Madam Chair, if I may, I, and again, I don't want to put Bill, one of the Bills or Brian on the spot either, but I but I mentioned it earlier with regards to this whole concept of looking at the service area and reimagine. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's if one of the bills could mention what is in the scope related to that idea. They might want to share. I see Bill's cameras on, so go ahead, William. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I've been following the discussion. It is a good discussion beyond the fact that we are. Um, and we'll be looking at the boundaries as part of reimagine, like we've already said. Um, I don't have much, much to add. And and Bill, so I'm gonna, as you look at the boundaries and raise that issue up with RT with the with the uh, reimagine committee, are there specific questions that you are going to be asking them to consider, other than just? Reflect on the on the size of the, you know, it, it may be provocative for us to think about the questions that you're going to be asking them. Right. At, at, at that point, I need to turn to my team who are more engaged in this than I. Um, either Bill or Brian, do you have anything to volunteer? <laughs> this is a dry run for the reimagine group. This is good, <laughs> Bill. This is a good yeah. thing. <laughs> Exactly, but I'm caught flat-footed. No. Well, I'll tell you what, the question that I would be curious about is that, uh, and maybe the peer agencies have something, but what is the type of service that is provided on the fringes? And what is the appropriate level of service that is provided on the fringes? Because frankly, what they may need does not look like what is needed in, in downtown Denver, right? That is, it's a different kind of service. And is it a service going to uh, uh, anchor institutions uh, that are primarily not jobs? Is it schools? Is it hospitals? Is it uh, medical services? Is it um, health and human services? Are those the type of trips that are needed or are they commute trips? And um, those are the questions that I, when I look at this, that's what I want to know. I will say these types of routes that extend beyond these denser areas of the district, these are not like high frequency transit routes as is. They're maybe like every hour, every two hours. So that's at least in our but those must also be our most expensive routes to serve in terms of our, our cost per boarding. Is and is there a more efficient way to serve them then, exactly. right? And Bill's, Bill's Soros is here. So. Yeah, so sorry, I, I just gave a little bit more context to what Bill has said. Um, so with Reimagine, this for everybody's per background, I mean, this is looking at either expansion and or contraction both. So it's not... We we're kind of look at this from both ways. I think the, the other piece to this is, I think some of the things that Annie has brought up, I think are correct in terms of density and how we're gonna look at that, how we're gonna serve 
you know, sustainably serve people on into the future, looking at that as part of the context of this. One thing to bring up, it's just interesting. I just, just as a matter of note, I was just shared with me this morning, a board report about the initial um, establishment of the district boundaries, which just for history buffs actually included Greeley. So, um, and that, that was taken out um, over time and it was refined, you know, all of Douglas County, all of Arapahoe County, all of Adams County was all in there and they were, it was shrunk over time. But I think that is some of those in the first several years of the district and some later on. But I think this is a process, I think that we're, we're, it's natural for us to look at as part of reimagine because we're looking at, you know, 2050, where do we wanna be and where are we at right now? So I, I think the context of this in terms of reimagine which we are kind of refining that scope right now because, you know, like I said, we, we've kind of had to think on our feet a little bit as we're responding to COVID and how we're responding to the mobility plan for the future. So we are kind of morphing that. We're going to get, we're getting some, gathering some information with our uh, consultants right now, including this, this historical piece of information. So it, it, it is something that, like I said, I think it's going to talk about density. It's going to talk about sustainability financially. Um, in terms of what we can do and, and what people, you know, expect, I think is, is part of that. Because I, obviously, I think, like we said, in the outer parts of this district that, that are shown, there's there's not a lot of service, and obviously, there's a reason for that. Right. Just a quick comment. Part of our charter for the RTD Accountability Committee was to ensure the long-term financial sustainability of RTD. And given the amount of debt it has incurred, I think that the idea that uh, that you would be looking at shrinking the boundaries is is a good thing. And I think that, as you mentioned, the financial sustainability. It's good to hear those words. And I guess I oh Dave, go ahead. Yeah, I um, <clears throat> I guess just to get a little bit more context on the microtransit and. Kind of connecting it into this conversation. Um, Annie, I, I just wanted to get clarity from you. So it looks like the, the one pager that was submitted kind of lays out that um, at least some micro mobility options could be better um, suited for more low den lower density suburban communities. So if I'm understanding it correctly against the maps, then this could micro mobility could actually serve in some of the, the more spread out areas of the district as a possible solution. Is that, am I just understanding that research correctly? Yeah, the, the micro transit pilots that have been um, more successful have been in areas of um, supplementing fixed route transit on the edges rather than complementing it where there's already high quality fixed route transit. Okay. And my assumption is that that microtransit service is not necessarily provided by the transit agency, but rather some sort of local zoning. Is that is that correct? Or were you able to dive into that? It can be provided by the agency or through a partnership um, with another provider. Is, is it like bike paths or microtransit? Because it's micromobility. <laughs> It's a broad scope. It could go from scooters to. Uh, I think it shut. I think it was shuttles from the what I read in the paper. It was more like a, a, a shuttle type of service. Right. And that's considered to be micro mobility, a shuttle. Micro, it's, we're talking about micro transit is, is shuttles. Micro mobility could be electric scooters, bikes, that kind of thing. But the one pager was on micro transit. OK, important. And a distinction because micro micro mobility has a pretty important role in building ridership. No doubt. Depending on your density. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, <You're> I, <laughs> yeah, I um, I this one size fits all. It doesn't have to be a fixed route system. But how do you support a fixed route system with providing micro transit on the fringes is something that I, I'm very interested in uh, understanding. And when we talk about right sizing the district, I also think right sizing the service fits in with that. 
And if you could right size the service um, where the communities really felt like it, they were seeing this real benefit, uh, I don't know that at least in, in you know, my neck of the woods, Douglas County, where there's been a lot of conversation about uh, you know, withdrawing potentially from RTD. Um, I, I would love to see that further explored. Is that something that, that reimagine is probably, that might be a bridge too far, but this idea of right-sizing service and right-sizing the district, is that being considered at all within the reimagine scope? Bill, um, yes, I think, you know, the, the interesting thing is I think we are going to be having some discussion about um, how we transition, um, you know, out of COVID and, you know, bring right, bring uh, some of our service back. And that will be, I know there's a lot of interest in that and a discussion around our service standards, which I know you, this group has talked about. So some of those things will be happening with Reimagine um, actually even at the next meeting next month. I guess I'm curious beyond just recovering from COVID and looking long-term how the issue might be dealt with. It, it, Bill, is it going to be more than just um, bringing people back? Yes. No, I think that one of the things, and this goes back to test people's memory. If, if, if you remember back to last summer, we initiated a discussion about looking at a kind of a new way of looking at our service standards. And we're going to bring that discussion back, okay. uh, which is related to looking at tiers of service versus looking at the way we do service standards now. So let me ask the, the body, do you think we are going to be in a position by, uh, clearly this is happening next month, our work is wrapping up, How, what is the recommendation or what do we want to consider from the governance group as comments uh, on the final report on this topic of right-sizing the district and right-sizing the service. And notice the way I snuck in right-sizing the service there. Elise. So I, I don't think I'm prepared to suggest that we um, have a recommendation on changing the size of RTD's service area. I, I, I think that that requires more analysis and time than we probably have. And the fact that reimagines looking at it, I think could mean that we allow them to take the lead on it. I, the notion of providing, I guess if I am understanding what you're saying about um, right-sizing the service um, to make sure that in a sense that we're we are providing cost-effective um, appropriately sized service, um, which hopefully, you know, will look differently in different parts. And, I, I, and I'm sensitive to the fact that I come from Boulder County, which operates more as a satellite area than sort of fringe. Um, and would note that um, some of the, the services that, you know, transit services to our mountain areas are extremely important lifelines and they don't have huge subsidies. Um, you know, so that I, I would never want to suggest that we um, decrease the size of the service area and cut those areas off, but making making sure that what we're providing that that not every every service has to look the same and have the same length, huge bus, and that kind of thing. That does make sense, and I could see us making recommendations to encourage RUTD to fit the types of services it provides and partners with local governments to create, making sure that it's appropriate to the level of density um, in, in the service area. That I could see us making a recommendation on. And I couldn't agree more. I think, and I think we should think about things to be considered as you explore right-sizing the district and right-sizing the service. I think that is a, a role it, that does make sense for this group to maybe feed into the other work that's being done, but. Does everyone agree or not? Or is it a bridge too far in the time we have? I think if you limit it to things to be considered, you're really not necessarily yep. pushing RTD to say, this is how you have to do it. Right. And, and I think that's in the spirit of what the accountability committee is supposed to be doing. 
So it just all depends on how the wording is written. Yeah. Well, and given that, do you have anything that you would like to add to the list or do we want to think about that and bring that back at the next meeting? Like we aren't going to be able to, nor, nor should we try and provide our take on all the solutions, but our, I do think it's appropriate that we give some recommendations about the, as you explore that, please consider this, right? Uh, what do you think, Daya? I'm, call, I'm calling everybody out. <laughs> No, I, I am thinking, I was just thinking about like, how do we frame a recommendation that acknowledges everything that we've already touched on as a committee and that we won't be able to get the final recommendation done, but rather that we're, we are respectfully requesting that RTD consider micromobility as an option to meet the, the transit needs of communities that may not have reliable service. Um, and then all, also consider other forms of mobility options, microtransit, and, X, Y, and Z to address the longer term issues. That would be my, that's that's like my gut reaction right now. Okay, good. Elise, any, anything else other than what you shared? Um, I, I, let me, let me sleep on it. I mean, I yep. think what I said was probably the, the bulk of what I'm, I think on that, I agree with what Daya just said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rhett, Rhett, anything else to add before, I don't wanna close us out of this if, if there's more we wanna talk about. I, yeah, Doug, you give Rhett more time to think. Go ahead, Rhett, I mean, Doug. Right. No, no, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd be happy to bring um, a straw man to the, to the meeting next time with some of the conversations that have been had you know, and I think it, you're right. It's about, it's considerations for RTD as they go through the reimagine process, right? These are some of the things, some of the questions that you might want to ask in that process to, um, yeah. To explore, yep. I, I, that next time. Yeah, okay. Anything else before we move on to the next item, which is not, which is next steps. But that, we started with one of them, uh, all right. Uh, let's, uh, I want to just make sure I got through the packet. I've got three screens going now. Okay. So next steps, um, Doug, you're going to bring us back some ideas to explore a little bit more on that. Um, and then, uh, the next meeting it looks like is May 3rd. So Doug, can you just refresh my memory of, I, where we are as far as putting together a draft document. And I know you guys went through this, but just to keep it the committee work ends uh, and recommendations are going in, in and then I know you need time to do the report. So when is the drop dead date? Yep. I hate that expression. Yeah, um, so as currently scheduled um, with our last, our last, well, the subcommittee, the governance subcommittee's last meeting will be May 17th. So all, all subcommittee business will end on May 19th, which is that Wednesday when finance and operations meet. Um, and then after that, uh, we will be putting, you know, gathering up and aggregating the list of recommendations. Um, there will be the, um, the equity assessment that will be done on the remaining recommendations. And um, from there, then we'll be packaging those recommendations for your consideration at a mid-June meeting. I can't remember exactly. And that's when we'll have a public hearing on the recommendations as well. And there will be a public comment period leading up to that meeting. Um, and then the final, the final reports, which will include those recommendations, you guys will, will ratify on a special meeting of the board, which will be our, our last one. I believe it's June 28th. Um, it's, it's a Monday. So that, that's, that's the proposed schedule. We have one topic remaining that we have not discussed yet, and that's the board structure. Um, North Highland has been has been commissioned to prepare a report on that and they have a draft uh, right now in place. So we will be sharing that draft report with, with you guys at the next meeting. So we'll have those, those two meetings almost exclusively to talk about the, this. And, and like I said, at the next meeting, we'll bring back um, some, some ideas and concepts based on the conversation we've had today on the, uh, on the service area uh, concept. Okay, and, and, that, and I, that was gonna be my question to you is that when, when are we gonna touch on the 
the structure, the governance structure itself. And then also, I, I think one of the things that Lynn shared with us uh, early on in this process is that um, RT that the board was considering uh, some new things like subcommittees, for example. So any anything that has been done there, instead of having the entire board participate on every subcommittee, I don't know if that's still, Lynn, do you, do you have any update on that or is that something still being discussed? I do. We've started a, a strategic planning process. Sorry about talking into my hand. I lost a crown on the front tooth. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but uh, we started a strategic planning process that's going to culminate in a, uh, a board retreat uh, sometime in June, I think. And the uh, um, Shelly Cook and Doug Tisdale have been uh, doing a lot of work on the small committee uh, proposal, and that will be coming um, forward. It seems to have a lot of support on the board. And, and I think that uh, I'm not totally sure of the timing, but I think that, that the idea is that that will be part of our uh, retreat planning. Okay, great. Thank, thank you for that update. And then what Doug, whatever info we can kind of share about that may, may feed in as well as the, to the structural conversation. Excellent. Okay, is there any, so I think that covered our next steps. I think we've got an ambitious next two meetings. So that's good. And I'm glad Julie will be back for those. <laughs> uh, all right, so that concludes our formal agenda. Uh, administrative items are next. And are there any member comments? No, I'm seeing all the heads are shaking. No, okay, and I don't see any other matters. Our next meeting is May 3rd, uh, 2020 at 4 p.m. And unless I see anything else, we ended early. That's a small miracle for a Monday. All right, well, thanks for everyone, your time and attention today. I very much appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Well, thank you, Mayor. Costa Rica. That's where we No, got thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Thank